they will not let this man rest in peace. Look, I know everybody has an opinion on Michael Jackson. A lot of that, that opinion has been, been created based off the media, worldwide media, okay? When I say worldwide media, I mean even your local media market, tabloids, magazines, so-called documentaries, opinion hosts, you name it. Since 1987, this man has been under attack in some shape, form, or fashion. Now his nieces and nephews, his surviving siblings, his mother, his other friends and family, they had to keep fighting for this, this brother's um, legacy. And like I've said in other videos, there are some things that Michael Jackson may have done that may go, oh, why did he do that? But then I had to sit back and think about this man is a baby, was a baby boy. He's a product of his time. And understanding that you had in the 1960s and 70s, even up to his death, people saw you a certain way. He had to try to fit into a certain image. And Michael was aware of it to a certain degree, I believe. And I think that Michael, the pressures of celebrity got to him as well. It would get to any human being if you had that kind of success. But the constant disrespect this man get. Last year, when Oprah gave her backing to those three guys, those three white guys who participated in, in, a, in a hit piece, a lie, and then you had people picking it out all across the globe. You had people that that started the uh, the creek, the, the wacko jackal persona said, wait a minute, let's pull it back. This, even we know this is not true. And the people that doubled down on it have an agenda. And, I, and, that, and big business have has an uh, agenda. See, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of people need to understand, Michael wasn't a dumb man. He may be naive, to, be, may have been naive to certain things, but he wasn't dumb. He was smart enough to buy the Beatles catalog and held on it for a long time. And that bothered a lot of people in mean, the music industry that this, and I'm, I'm just going to say this is what they thought, and they probably said it at business meetings or whatnot. This nigga from Gary, Indiana, owned a Beatles catalog? This nigga? This freak? This weirdo? This child molester? That's what they say. And we know they said. Every time Michael did something, it was interpreted in a negative way. This man gave money. He gave his time. He befriended people that people threw to the side. And a lot of people don't ever bring up Ryan White anymore. The young age uh, a patient, uh, the, 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 a boy that was uh, affected by the HIV and then became AIDS because of uh, uh, blood, things, a blood transfusion. Because back in the 80s, they didn't take precautions they take now. Like a lot of y'all go get blood work. They didn't have they they had dis they dispose of them, but they don't dispose of them like they do today. They have precautions today, and you know you know they make sure blood is tested. They make sure people are screened, things of that nature. And Michael befriended him, and a lot of people don't ever bring that part up. When Princess Dow was alive, Michael met her, donated money to charity. Pepsi even matched the money and stuff. I mean, it's a lot of things that this man did that people don't talk about. <coughs> Excuse me. And they go, and they, and they keep rehashing things that have been proven false. And we gotta re realize that, that people set out to destroy this man. And a lot of these people are still here. And on the slide, they still write books and columns and say, well, he did this and did that. If Geraldo Her Rivera, and everybody knows he's a jerk, can sit there and say on TV, yo, he didn't do this. He was set up. I had it wrong. Then a reporter uh, by the name of Aphrodite Jones sat there and said, I had it wrong too. And there's some other people that said they had it wrong, but they don't dare put them in front of the cameras. This man, life should be studied. It should be a class on what not to do, how to watch your back. Because Michael had a lot of sycophants around him. And I'm pretty sure that rubbed certain family members a, a, diff, a, a certain way. But they still have their brothers back even in death. It pains me to watch an interview with Tito and Marlon and Jackie. And when Jermaine participated in these interviews. You can see the pain. They're like, this is our little brother. And you guys still insist that he did something that he was proven to be innocent of. 
the FBI came out and stated that, hey, we've been following this man. There's no evidence that anybody's ever followed a, a, a child molester, a pedophile, however you want to describe them, who take advantage of children. They have a trail. They have signs that as little boys and little girls that they did certain things. If you want, and I'm not saying Michael Jackson compared him to John Wayne Gacy, but I'm using an example. John Wayne Gacy was showing signs of abnormal behavior when he was a child. It, when he became an adult, it, it showed abnormal behavior. But because he's white, he was given the benefit of the doubt. Nobody looked in his direction too much. Ted Bundy, all these different dudes. And, and, and yet, we don't talk about them in the same breath. And they took lives. Michael, is no proof. And it's more evidence that Michael was a straight man. But he had to put on a show for the world. If you watch certain interviews, Brother Mike, that voice is deep. And if you caught Mike moving around a little too masculine and he realized somebody's watching, he stopped. As a matter of fact, it reminds me of Kanye West. You know, when Kanye West got caught smiling and enjoying himself, he realized the camera, he, he went whoop, he put that act, that mask on. And the person that Michael Jackson was to get that big globally, he had to put on the show. Remember, this man grew up in, in the entertainment business. So he saw it from different angles. But that last case, that, that destroyed Michael. And you saw that man waste away. And, I'm, and I know it's, it's problematic and, and it hurts his family. But it hurts me as a black man to constantly this black man reputation just constantly just, just kicked around. And it hurts to know that a black woman or black people participated. And I want y'all to remember last year, yeah, Oprah gave 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 gave, it, gave her her blessing. Gail did an interview too with Michael's uh, surviving siblings, and a lot of people in the media threw him under the bus. D.L. Hughley and them, SNL make fun of him all the time. The Wayans can make fun of him all the time. You know, Mark Lamont Hill has something negative to say about Michael J. I mean. You know, we already know the white folk out there who didn't like Michael was going to say something negative about him. Because, and the thing is, when black folk, when he passed, and black folk said, we got to give respect to the brother, Bill O'Reilly, they got mad at us. Joe Scarborough, Mika Brzezinski, the same people that came out this week, like, black women need to be protected, black reporters to them. They talked about the man wasn't even buried yet. Now, I know you said, this is stuff that we already know, but it bears repeating because you have to understand there are people who are coming into discovering Michael Jackson every day. Everybody, you know, I remember when I discovered Michael Jackson, I was a little boy, but that's when I knew him and his brothers, you know, and then when he went in around that time off the wall, I was just discovering off the wall because when you grow up, you hear Jackson 5 stuff. That's how you introduced to the Jacksons. Then when they became the Jacksons, then Michael did his solo thing, and then 1983, Thriller uh, blew up. It blew up, and it was nothing like it. And, and I mean, 1983, 84, 85, 86, 87, those were Michael years. I mean, really, when Michael was on the top of the world. And today, people are still trying to emulate what this man created when he started it. But what bothers me when Hollywood try to take Diggs and Michael, um, you might recognize this this woman here. This is Zoe Kravitz. I can't stand her just like I can't stand her old mama, Lisa Bonet. And I know y'all gonna say, what does this got to do with Michael Jackson? Trust me, a lot. Zoe claimed the fame is uh, based on who her parents are. Her dad is Lenny Kravitz, her mom, Lisa Bonet. And she looked more, she, I mean, she looked like her parents, but she looked more like her mom. And I think that's what, what it was, the novelty of it. And whether she want to admit to it or not, her mom is popular because of a TV show she participated in and back in the 80s and into the 90s. And her mom, you know, burnt bridges or tried to, to to badmouth the person that gave her opportunity because she didn't want to listen. And I still think it's, she got daddy issues, you know, Lisa Bonet. But a lot of times children take after their parents or they try to fight their parents 
battles or they perceive battles. Chloe was a, a infant, or not an infant, I would say a toddler by the time the Cosby show wrapped, wrapped up, because if I'm not mistaken, uh, Zoe was born in 87, 88, and the Cosby show went off in 92, so she's what, about four, three or four years old by the time it went off the air. It's no way she can have have memories of the show, maybe vague memories of, of being around people. But if Raven Simone, who act on the show, have any memories, but then again, everybody will formulate memories the same way, because things I can remember at the age of uh, three and four, you know, that, that you know, most people say, oh, I don't remember that happening, but I can remember it vividly. I can remember um, being three and four, finding um, uh, birthday presents, one of my first roller skates, things of that nature. So she might, she just might, but I don't think she understand the, the dynamics between her mother and Bill Cosby. But when the first stuff came out about Bill Cosby, uh, she didn't say anything. And she shouldn't have said anything. Her mother didn't say anything. Once Cosby got, got thrown under the bus and got and got sent to jail, all of a sudden she started making comments about Bill Cosby and talking about his spirit and everything, but she claimed that she was sexually harassed. And she never mentioned the director that supposedly harassed her. But you got shit to say about Bill Cosby. Well, it's kind of ironic that you know now all of a sudden she's been in a bunch of TV shows and, and movies. Now she got cast as Catwoman. And I told people, that new Batman movie, I'm not going to see it. I'm not supporting anything with Zoe Kravitz in it. I'm not doing it because she's, she's arrogant. She, 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 any, she make, they always got her as a love interest to some white dude. You know what I mean? Or even a white woman. She sat here and talked, she can make comments about Bill Cosby, but won't talk about anybody that did anything wrong to who were white. And that's very telling. Well, she's in a new TV show that's on Hulu. It's High Fidelity, and it's based upon the High Fidelity movie, and I guess it's a book about it, but I guess it's done on the reverse, where, you know, the John Cry character was, you know, obviously male, but she's a female. And in the second episode, this white woman came in to buy a Michael Jackson um, album for her boyfriend, and she won it off the wall. Zoe... And the black female is always a dark, heavy, heavy set black female. In these shows that are always just over, over, always on or just over exaggerate shit. But she made a big stink about her. And the Zoe character made a big stink about Michael Jackson being a pedophile. He's, they say he's a child molester or something, just whatever. And the white woman said allegedly. And then the white guy that works in, works in the record shop with Zoe, who turned out to be gay, but they had a relationship, said, do we start, they said, allegedly, do we start uh, banning or criticizing other artists who've been accused of things? But they went in heavy on Michael Jackson. And I'm like, all the people, they could have they had a discussion. They went on Michael Jackson. He's an easy target. Because in the media, he's been talked about the last year. And you owe that to Oprah. And you owe it to HBO. Here it is. That man, man is dead. This shit marked eleven years that he's been gone, and when he died, everybody wanted to be in the Michael Jackson business. Remember Chrysler, Dodge was doing that commercial with, and they was had the Justin Timber fake uh, duet with him and stuff. Remember when uh, Nintendo and PlayStation had the video games about Michael Jackson? Remember that? All of a sudden, he's the Beatle catalog is so. You start seeing little, little drops in the media where they want to bash him again. And I had told people in my comments, I said, like, they're about to go out to Michael Jackson again. Once they saw that Beatles catalog, they didn't have to play nice with his estate anymore. And rather, Zoe, and I read it in, I went to go look it up. Let me let me go re look it up, and I'm going to read it to you. Because thanks to a fellow YouTuber, and I won't mention their name because I, I don't want everybody bombard that, that YouTuber with negative comments. Because I could... You know, I'm not saying they can't take it, but I don't want them to hit that YouTuber like that. The particular YouTuber, you know, told me, hey, Harvey, you need to check this out. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And, and they know who they are now. Thank you. Um, it just, what with, with Zoe, the energy she gave, I, and, and this is the thing, this is why I keep telling you, we got to step outside our comfort zone when we get information. And let me go pull it up real quick. Let me see if I can pull up and read it. 
and I'll read it to you. Zoe Kravitz explained why High Fidelity reopens the debate about Michael Jackson and Kanye West. What would your favorite music artists have to do before you delete them from your Spotify? And also, they did mention Kanye West as well. Playlist. That question is at the center of a heated argument early in Zoe Kravitz's new Hulu series, High Fidelity. Sure, maybe you read the 1995 book of the same name or seen the 2000 film with John Cusack or even maybe the Broadway musical in 2006 that closed in 10 days. But the big little livestock who also co-exec produced on the show made sure to lay down a track that spoke directly to music lovers today. We have a conversation about on the show about Michael Jackson and Kanye. Now notice two black men. No, ain't talk about no white artists. You talk about two black men. I had a little bit of a worry of this going to be interesting to hear when the show comes out. Kravis tell EW. But I think that it's with pop culture, even though it's constantly changing and evolving, if the question is interesting, if the debate is interesting, it doesn't really matter how relevant, relevant it is in, ter in terms of time. Kravis played Bob, uh, Rob, a loveless record owner, uh, store owner who's along with her friends Cherise, whatever that fat chick name, and her ex turned friend Simon to kick off episode one. Rob smashed through the fourth wall to break down all type five harbors. I don't know how that shit. But the thing is, is that, you know, she is a Zach producer and she decided, they decided her and the writers say, hey, we're going to talk about Michael Jackson, I mean, um, Kanye West. And my thing is, Michael was accused, he was clear. But, you know, they don't never, like Eddie Griffin said, they never want us to leave clean. We always got to be painted as the villain of the story. Now, mind you, she'll do a story, do a, do a dialogue, a, a diatribe or whatever about Michael Jackson and Kanye West. But this is a chick that says she was harassed by a director, and to this day, she won't mention the guy's name. That means the guy's still a mover and shaker in Hollywood. It's funny, you can talk about black men who've been accused, or black men who have done stuff, and you can make sure y'all keep it in the press. Now, Michael, he didn't do anything to anybody. It was white folk way of projecting on him. I mean, you had all these sheriffs come in, they raided the man house, still ain't found nothing. All the witnesses they had. What do Jay Leno and Michael Jackson got in common? Eddie Griffin, all these different people, what do they have in common with Michael Jackson? What do they have in common with Bill Cosby? There is a connection there, Eddie Griffin. Eddie's seen, seen, seen from both ends. Chris Tucker. Zoe is wrong, wrong, wrong. She didn't bother to her own damn height. I will not be supporting that, that Batman movie. I don't care who's starring in it. I don't, I don't care how much I like comic books. I'm not going to support it. Anything with Zoe and I'm not going to do it. Because she just like her mama. Disrespectful to black men. Very disrespectful. And she got a black dad. I know people say, well, Lenny Kravitz is half white. But Lenny Kravitz identified and seemed to be more in tune with his blackness. People can sit there and say, well, Ingrid Zoe's half white. Yeah, she, um, grandmother, grand, grandfather, you know, on both sides. You know, she got white grandparents. You know what I mean? But the thing is, she got black grandparents. When people see her, they look at her and see a black woman. And for Zoe to be out here constantly opening her mouth, doing the same crap her mom did, it's, dis it's very alarming. Michael Jackson has a family. And every time somebody does shit like this in the media and press, you, you, what you're doing, they try to condition another generation like they do with O.J. Simpson. If you say it long enough, anything you mention O.J. Simpson, then you're going to groan. If you say, if like, you know, when um, you, somebody, you say Mr. Farrakhan, they always go jump to the anti-Semitism thing, never talk about anything else. They select what they want you to hear and understand. Like I said, I never met Michael Jackson. I wish to God I could have. I could have said this and said, Mr. Jackson, watch your back. Mr. Jackson, be on and around the people that you really, truly trust. Because a lot of people who claim to be Michael Jackson, like Rabbi Shmuley, that dude, when Michael wasn't even dead an hour, he was on TV, bad mouth of Michael and his family. 
But yet, this dude can stick with, take pictures of Steve Bannon and Donald Trump and them. People don't never point that crap out. Zoe Kravitz has been buck wild. She claimed the fame is grabbing off her mama and daddy fame. And then she's been out here dating a bunch of dudes. And, and, and then she comes out doing a so-called Me Too thing. Yeah, I was harassed too. But you ain't never named the, named the, the guy who did it. But you can sit and talk about a man that you knew when you were still in diapers. You can badmouth him because your mama badmouth him. Then you do a show that you're executive producer where you turn around and want to talk about two black men. All the weirdos in Hollywood in the music industry, you choose Kanye and Michael because last year Kanye and Michael was a top was a topic of discussion. And Kanye, it's like when Kanye is silent. Go out and pull Kanye West out there. You had Kanye West wear a hat, a MAGA hat, but okay, so what? There are a lot of people in the entertainment industry that says and does things we don't necessarily agree with. I mean, look, I'll give you an example. Now, he's not on the same level as a Michael or a Kanye. Dean Kane, best known as Superman. Lately, he's been in the news for saying all kinds of crazy shit. But ain't nobody sitting there saying, Dean Kane, you, you, you represent DC Comics and Warner Brothers. You, you wore that Superman. And then again, that's probably why his ass was in that, that um, crossover um, event they did with all the characters. But the thing is, nobody's bringing up what these people are saying. They, and they saying some pretty mean-spirited stuff. Michael never said anything mean-spirited. People have caught those guys in a lot. They caught out Oprah. Oprah knuckled down. Gail to support her. People in the media are saying, well, it's a story. No, it's not a story. It's a lie. Anybody with any common sense and compassion can go back and say, okay, let me, let me take myself out of fan, the fan zone for a second. Let me look at it from start to finish. And a lot of it was in your window, and, and a, lot, a lot of it was lies as well. But to do a TV show, and y'all, in the second episode, you throwing Michael under the bus, man, that's it, it just, just bad taste. Now, they're going to hide and say, well, it's a conversation people have all over the country. Yeah, people having the conversation don't mean you got to put it on, on film. And then let you have two black women deliver the blow. But got two white folks saved? It's, oh, it was alleged. Lynch. Well, he's a good artist. But the two black women, you got the dark-skinned chick really making a big stink about it. But you know what they're doing? And, and they're trying to make it seem as if black women are the ones who led that charge on Michael, but it wasn't black women that led the charge on Michael. It was white women. Yeah, Oprah is the probably the most well-known black woman in America, but it was Oprah and her friend Gail that did it, but a large number of black women have come out defending Michael Jackson. Yeah, there's some brothers that still waffle back and forth and stuff, but the thing is, is that to see them constantly attacking this brother the way they do, it's painful. And I can just imagine what the family is going through. And I can imagine what Mrs. Jackson is going through. I mean, she's, she's Michael's mother. You know, she don't want to live out her remaining years constantly hearing negative about her son. And Oprah didn't give a damn. Oprah didn't care how Michael's mother would take this. And when Michael's mother opened her doors to Oprah, and I remember why, like, man, I wish that she never did that. Because Oprah is a master manipulator. Her and Gail Kane and them, their friends sit back and they just badmouth uh, black people, especially the ones that Caucasians ain't feeling. And I want to remind y'all, look what Oprah and Gail surrounded by. People that had issue with Michael Jackson or criticized Michael Jackson. Think about this for a second. You don't see a black man in that picture. Why do you think that everybody came out defending Gail and, uh, and Oprah? Think about it. Paul McCartney's right there next to David Geffen. Think about it. Um, I'm telling y'all right now, Oprah gave, gave cover for white America or whites in, 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 in the entertainment industry to go out there and say, okay, this guy destroyed this man's legacy once for all. And Zoe Kravitz didn't have to do an episode about that. I don't, you know, I don't, but then again, like I said, I don't expect a lot out of black entertainment because it's like we turn into a bunch of cowards. 
I want them to do an episode where they talk about Elvis Presley in the same light. And let's see how Elvis Presley estate or Elvis fans react. They're not going to go there. The other day when everybody had a conversation about what was inappropriate with Gail and Oprah had been doing, the media quickly changed subject. Because they, they, they didn't want you going after they, they, they bulldogs. Oprah and Gail would go out there and do and say anything to destroy black men or black people. But then you got Zoe Kravitz jumping in the fray, bad mouth and Cosby. Now she's the executive producer of a TV show that decides, second episode, we're going to talk about Michael Jackson and Kanye West and the next but mostly Michael Jackson. People need to let me need to understand that Black people like Zoe, Zoe Kravitz and them. I know y'all can say, but she ain't really black. Nah, the world see her as black. Trust me on this one. They, 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 they figure if they go in and say some negative about black folk, we all can say some negative. I mean, look, look what they did to Nate Parker. Kobe wasn't even in the, in the ground. He wasn't even taken from the, the, the crash site. And it was bad mouthing Kobe. Who start all this up and then we get like we get pulled in like fools, amen, and we're giving them cover. I hope the Jackson family is able to sue, but then I think they said when you die, it's hard to do that. But it shouldn't be that easy to go out there and and and, and, and besmirch somebody's character. This is why those of us new black media, we have to be vigilant when they tell these stories. Regardless of what, what form they in, whether it's on a television show. This television show or so-called documentary, what I call it, hit pieces now, um, or a streaming service, because they need our dollars to survive. But at the same time, we have a voice. But I'm telling you right now, if black folks start going after the people within our community who hate white supremacy, they won't be able to do this. They won't feel comfortable. So when that Batman movie come out, maybe the black men and black women, even though we may be fans of that genre, maybe we shouldn't go support that film. And maybe we shouldn't support a stepdad sequel or any, any projects he got. Make the whole family feel the burn. And even Lenny Kravitz, as much as I like Lenny Kravitz, got to make him feel the burn too. Tell somebody, tell Zoe, shut the fuck up. Because all her criticism has been directed towards black men. And you do, you do the... Your second episode, not even 10 minutes into the show, you want to throw Michael Jackson under the bus. You want to talk about Kanye West. With all the questionable things white folk have did, you got, you got over 500, 500 years of white folk doing questionable things and still doing it, but y'all don't, do, don't do documentary stories about it. Y'all don't talk about them in passing. Black men and black women, but more so black men are always cannon fodder. If we as a people don't have criticism about one another, <clears throat> we don't be need to do it. We don't need to do it in mixed company. We don't need to give them any ammunition or any permission to do that. Because I mean, thanks to my fellow YouTuber, when they said, you know, hey Harv, you need to check this out. And I'm, I, I'm like, huh? And I just sat there like, you know, how those cartoons, you know, your mouth hit the floor, your tongue roll out. I'm like, what the? I mean, don't get me wrong. This ain't the first time. This past year, we heard somebody on a TV show say something negative about Michael Jackson. It's, it's who delivered and the way they delivered that's rubbing me the wrong way. And the thing is, Zoe is exec producer. She could have said, no, I don't think we want to go there. That's a sensitive subject. Basically, because Oprah let a document, amen, a document, they treat that as fact. But we, so men tell me the court case don't mean Jack. But then again, and when O.J. Simpson's found not guilty, everybody keeps saying he's guilty. So whatever we get accused of, and they and they re rarely find us not guilty. That's they don't accept. They don't accept the finding of it. He did it. And then these two dudes have been proven liars, and that's the thing. But you still, Oprah, I believe he did it. But when people try to do an expose or talk about Oprah, Oprah hits him back or her, 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 her handlers, we got to protect Oprah and Gail. We need them. 
But one of these days, Oprah and Gail are going to outuse their uses, and I'm telling you, they're going to dog them. And when Oprah leaves this plane of existence, it's going to be a bunch of dirt to come out about Oprah. Watch and see. Yeah, she used to do this. We had to sign a, a, a contract, yada, yada, yada. This is how Oprah and Gail really were. And But the thing is, I want to see them suffer like Michael suffered. I want to see them get blasted like Michael did while he was alive. Michael has children, okay? Whatever issues we, we might take up with them or think they're not doing, whatever. We, they, you have to understand, their lives have been unique. They've been in a, pu cor the public eye since they were babies. And now they, they, they're in their 20s, they're trying to find themselves, and they don't need this extra drama. They don't need to be constantly, constantly bombarded with, did your daddy do this? And all my colleague Kobe came out defending Michael because he knew Michael. He didn't do what Corey Feldman and some other people did to Michael, but turn around, bad mask him last shit because Oprah said, okay, you guys can do it. And then when, we, then when people in the black community start pushing back, we're looked upon as bullies. No, the man has been gone a decade. He can't defend himself, and we saw what the toll of that last trial did to him. Yeah, everybody can blame Dr. Conrad Murray, but I, 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 if I'm reading or interpreting what I've seen in the interviews with some of the family members, they know that, he, that Conrad Murray was the only one that, that destroyed Michael. But as I said, it's an interview on Access Hollywood where Michael was in Ireland with Will I Am. And you could tell Mr. Jackson got small. You can, you can, I just, I felt bad for the brother. Because to, as a black man, I, we all know what it's like to, uh, well, black men, excuse me, correct myself. As black men, we know what it's like to be accused of stuff that we didn't do, our reputations in, 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 um, destroyed. Out of jealousy, out of spite, out of racism. But when you got Oprah Winfrey, Gail King, Zoe Kravitz, and, and some other sisters out here, Bad mouthing this man, like he said, like, wait a minute. Like, I remember Joy Behar, the much the view was talking about Michael was weird and stuff. And Whoopi Goldberg, who I can't stand. Whoopi Goldberg, who throw brothers under the bus with the quickness, she defended Mike. She said, I know Mike. My kids and grandkids is around. She said, I know the, know the man. He's not a weirdo. And I have to give Whoopi Prosser because she the easy did what she did with Bill Cosby, turned on him. But then again, maybe she, Whoopi didn't know Bill Cosby like that. She knew him from a distance. But she said she knew Michael Jackson. Vlad, over that Vlad TV, if it ain't Michael Jackson he throw on the bus, if it ain't Chris Brown or Bill Cosby, but he loved talking about Michael Jackson, though, know, he did some weird things. I'm like, why do y'all sit with these white folk that constantly besmirch our people character? Now, let's just say me shits and giggle Michael Jackson, what everybody say he is. But my thing is, if you're going to talk about him, talk about them all. No, they working overtime to destroy Michael Jackson's legacy. And it's painful to see that black women participate. And I think Gabrielle Union even said something about Michael Jackson. And, and, and I'm pretty sure y'all are going to find, find the links and stuff. A lot of black folk last shit, they just left Michael hanging. D.L. Hughley talked about Michael like a dog. Don Lemon, the little senior. Yeah, the, 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 the allegations of Michael brought up. You got to admit, he was weird. Weird to who? Everybody in the entertainment industry is weird, in my opinion, because they do things that most people wouldn't do. Or it's a magnifying glass, and most people, and a lot of people do the same thing, just that nobody's watching us. That man, wherever he went, that man got cameras on him. And y'all, and, and, and he was, every move he made was analyzed. NBC did a, a, a demean special before Michael passed. What's the guy, you, you be on Dateline? I forget his name. Michael Jackson, ever changing appearance. They don't do that. It's a lot of white folk, they had plastic surgery. They don't, they don't say nothing, but till like they don't, they don't see it. They don't notice it. But they went in on Michael because they wanted to destroy his character. Then they tried to do it with his sister, Janet. Les Moonves did everything this way to the mess. And Janet Correct ain't been the same. We have to be honest. 
Yes, she's out there touring, but it ain't like it was back in the day. And then Justin Timberfake was able to go unscathed. And, and I'm like, something just, they just, they don't like that family because they beat, they defied the odds. All of them are talent. self taught They didn't go to school to burn, to, to burn a talent. They, that was in them. They father saw something in them and they always dis, dis, dispersed Mr. Jackson's name. But those of us in our community, we talk about Joe Jackson and the positive. The ones who don't know any better, the ones who manipulated, or the ones who didn't, wasn't blessed to have a dad in life. We look when 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 Michael and his his brothers used to say things about Joe being tough. People interpret it, he's abusive. Maybe and, and then again, maybe maybe to Michael he, he, they thought he was, but then Michael got old and Michael did an interview where he apologized as that. Since he said, "Now I'm a father, I see what my father was doing." They don't never play that 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 interview. They're not going to do it because they want you to believe that the black man is the boogeyman. And it's weird. You didn't believe Michael when he said he was innocent, but you believe Michael when he said, said his father was abusive or alleged he said his father was abusive because it, it was interpreted a certain way depending on who you who you listening to. I, I, like I said, I never met the Jackson family. I never met Michael Jackson. But the constant disrespect this man and his family getting is just... It's, it's just, it's, it's demeaning. It's disgusting. All these people that like to sit back and make market because he's an easy target. Because they've been doing it for so long. It's time for black America. And I, like I said, we can always agree with each other. We might have our criticism issues with some of the people that we're talking about. But you got to admit, it is all for one-sided. And yeah, I know I got the picture focus on Oprah and Gail, but Oprah gave her blessings to that documentary, a hit piece. Gail King did an interview with Michael Brothers, and she was just as condescending as she was with R. Kelly and Lisa Leslie. All these white folk in Hollywood have done dirt over the years. The stories that everybody know, Oprah and Gail ain't talking about that. Lisa, I mean, Zoe Kravitz ain't talking about that. Michael is low-hanging fruit, and it's time we start calling people out when they do this stuff to our people. So when Zoe's uh, movie come out, Batman, you know, all the tie-in and the comic books, the toy stuff, don't support it. We got to start showing people that you can't keep crapping on the black community or members of the black community, especially the ones who can't speak for themselves anymore. I mean, people should point and say, Zoe, since you got an opinion about uh, Mr. Cosby and Michael Jackson or whomever, let us, tell us who the guy that harassed you. Tell us the guy that sexually harassed you, the one name you won't mention. Since you want to get out here and talk crap about, about people, tell, 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 I want you to tell us. Tell us who that, who that harassed you on that movie set. She won't go there. She ain't going to go there. See, if it's a black person, she'll throw, throw them under the bus all day because it's a part of her reject who she is. Because she even said in the interview she didn't know where she fit in and stuff. And I'm like, look at you. you just light-skinned, but people see you as a black woman. Ain't no, they ain't mistaking you for no white woman. But if you watch the show she was in, you, you, the, the first few episodes, you see where the story is going. You see how she, how she she's an exec producer. You see where her head is at. I watched the first episode, so I'm like, okay, just to get a gist of what's going on. Then that second episode, when I saw that when they went into that Michael Jackson diatribe, I'm like, okay. I, I my opinion about her was correct. So when that, when that movie come out next year. I won't, I won't buy nothing. I won't buy no, no Blu-ray, none of that stuff. I'm not supporting that. We got to start letting people know you just can't keep kicking black people when they're down, especially when they're dead and gone. I mean, let that man rest in peace. 